I feel like there should be like a sole ASMR book person who only taps and reads from books and that's their ASMR channel. Like, that would be an amazing ASMR channel. I would totally subscribe to that. <laughs> hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be doing my March wrap up. So it has been actually a long while <laughs> since I have formally done a video. I think it's been a month, to be honest with you, since I've gotten out my filming equipment. <laughs> I know it's been a while. And the last formal video that I did was my February wrap up. <laughs> Life is crazy. I am most of the time never home when it is daytime because my job is nannying kids. So I'm taking care of kids during the day. When I come home, I have like maybe like an hour before it turns really dark. And I now I've come to the realization that I just need to film in the dark. That's what's happening right now. It's nine o'clock at night. It's pitch black outside. <laughs> I also, redid my bookshelf over here these two shelves behind me i'll show you i decided to rearrange it wanted to spruce it up a little bit fantasy slash magical realism shelf whereas this one didn't change at all most of them are romance contemporary ya books adult books that kind of stuff finally got my my, my baby back <laughs> i finally have my copy of bring me their hearts back thank goodness it's the love of my life after i got it back i was like this is my favorite fantasy book at the moment, so I need to display it. So if you haven't read Bring Me Their Hearts yet, please do. It's my favorite YA fantasy book. So take a picture. These are some fantasy slash magical realism books that I totally recommend, sci-fi books. I always forget to add sci-fi in there because this whole thing right here is sci-fi. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna actually talk about the books that I read in March. This video is going to be very long. Again, that is because I read 16 books in the month of March. It's April 2nd and I am already over halfway done with my Goodreads challenge. Most of the books on this list are audiobooks. I listened to 10 of them. In March, I read three physical books and three ebooks. So in total, 16. So normally I do my wrap ups with talking about my least favorite to my favorite. It's gonna be a little bit different because I read a lot of Megan March books again. So I thought I would just start off with all of the books that I read, get that out of the way. The reason why I am choosing to start off with this series is because the ranking process doesn't go in order of this series. For example, like I would have given the fifth book a four to five stars when I gave the sixth book like a 7.5, but then the seventh book a two out of five stars, like it goes up and down. So I'm just gonna talk about the two series by her that I read and completed in the month of March. Okay, if you didn't know about Megan March, she writes smutty romance books. There are a couple books though that I read in March, by her that I really ended up enjoying. I will say none of them got a five star though from me. And I'm gonna talk about these really quickly because there are too many of them. Too many of them. Book number one that I'm going to talk about today is Dirty Pleasures by Megan March. This is the second book in the Dirty Billionaire series. I talked about the first book last month and I talked about in my other wrap up how the first book was basically all smutty scenes that was it and most of her other books have like some substance to it other than just sex and so i was very disappointed but i decided to give it a chance and continue on with the series this book was way better than the first one i gave this book a four out of five stars this is about our main character holly who walks out on a one night stand and it turns out the guy that she walked out on is a billionaire and no one ever tells him no or walks out on him so he basically sends out a missed connection online through the news because he's so famous and so rich it's them coming together holly is actually also a like up and coming country singer so that was interesting to read about because i'd never read about an up and coming country singer before i also read the third book dirty together by megan march this is the third and final book to the trilogy and i gave this one a 3.75 out of five stars i would have given it four stars except I was expecting more. I think it should have been longer in my opinion. I think it would have been way better if there was more substance to it, more plot points, just make it a bigger book. Okay, so the next series that I read by Megan March is the Beneath series. I read first book in January, the second book in February, and I read the rest of them in March. There are seven books in the series, so I listened to 
quite a lot but I'm not going to be going into specifics because it is a series it is a companion series so technically you don't need to read these in order at all to understand but previous characters do pop up so I think it would heighten the enjoyment if you read them in order so the third book in the series that I completed in March was Beneath These Chains by Megan March which is the third book in the Beneath series I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars this is basically about a rich girl falling for a kind of like dangerous rugged bad boy who owns a pawn shop i also forgot to say i listened to all of these on audiobook and all of the characters are above the age of 21 so it's like adult romance and i'm not gonna be talking about the specific couples like i did in the other book because i don't want to spoil it because later on throughout the books it kind of becomes love triangles and i'd rather not spoil a book for you by talking about another book in the series so the fourth book in the series is beneath these scars i gave this one a four stars and this is a hate to love relationship kind of because the man in the relationship is um hated by basically everyone and him falling for a girl who owns her own little boutique and i really enjoyed that one the fifth book in the series is beneath these lies i gave this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars this is kind of like a love triangle but not really two guys basically ask her out at the same time and she says yes to both of them because she's never really been with a guy since she was sexually assaulted so she wants to put herself out there it's been years since the occurrence so she wants to put herself out there but she only really really falls for one of the guys and i really love their couple they're my favorite couple in the entire series but at the beginning you don't know who she's gonna pick so i find this one interesting if you were to read any of the books out of this series I would pick this one. The sixth book in the series is Beneath These Shadows. I gave this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This one had the most New Orleans feel to it. If you didn't know, this whole series is set in New Orleans. It has the most New Orleans feel to it because it happens during Mardi Gras. You have a bunch of scenes where they're walking around the streets of New Orleans and going to Mardi Gras, walking through cemeteries. So this was the most New Orleans feel to it and I really enjoyed that. This one is about the daughter of a crime lord and her like breaking out on her own in New Orleans and falling for a guy who works in a tattoo shop. The last book in the series, the seventh book in the series is Beneath the Truth. I gave this one a four out of five stars. I was expecting way more from the ending because this is the final book in the series and at the end the epilogue you have all of the characters coming together in like a little scene and I was expecting just a little bit more to be honest with you I think it would have added to the story if she added more to each person's scene okay we're done with Megan March books yay the next book that I read was an ebook and the cover is going to throw you off please don't judge a book by its cover this cover is not good I know it's not good okay this book is called claimed by an alien warrior by Tiffany Roberts okay the cover threw me for a loop. I don't like it. <laughs> there was a couple reasons why I picked this one up. I previously read a Tiffany Roberts book in the past that I loved so much. A great paranormal romance book. Really loved about like a devilish creature falling in love with a siren. I really loved that. But this one was an alien romance book and I love alien romance books. They're like my total trashy read when I need to read something and I have a bunch of freebies on my phone so on a whim one night I just picked it up this was not as good as their other books Tiffany Roberts is a husband wife duo but I gave this book a three out of five stars basically this is an alien romance book set on earth this alien was captured by the government and years later he has finally escaped he comes across this woman in her car in the middle of nowhere basically holds her captive and like forces her to help him out drive him to where his space pod is spaceship is to get him the hickety heck out of there it's kind of like a road trip alien romance book <laughs> I will say this was really fun fun to read i just thought this was like a light fluffy smutty read <laughs> a thing that bugged me about this book is that we get the villain's perspective which didn't add anything to the book whatsoever didn't like it didn't feel it was needed at all the ending could have been way 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 better it would have been way better if it was longer the next book is kind of an unpopular opinion i honestly don't see the hype surrounding 
The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. First off, if you didn't know what The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue is about, it's a historical fiction book set in England. I don't remember the specific dates for it, but it's about this 19 year old, I believe 19 year old, 19, 18 year old named Monty. Before he inherits or starts working for his father's company, he decides to go on tour with him and his best friend Percy and his sister Felicity and turns out he's in love with his best friend Percy so he's trying to like figure out everything figure out his feelings and stuff like that I think this is a great diverse read I really enjoyed that aspect of it so I listened to this audiobook and to be honest with you if I didn't listen to the audiobook I probably would have liked it way less than I did. I ended up giving this book around a 3.5 to a 3.75 out of 5 stars and to be honest I might be even leaning 3 as I'm thinking about it. The only thing that I liked about this book was the romance. That's the only thing that I liked or even cared about. I liked the characters. I thought they were interesting. They were very well developed. I will say Mackenzie Lee did a great job of developing these characters. They were really great. But I didn't really care. <laughs> so I basically only really cared about the romance part of this book, which is only maybe 10% or less of this, maybe like 500, 400 page book. But other than the romance, I was bored. Very, 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 very bored. The saving grace for me was the audiobook and the narrator because the narrator was flippin' fantastic. If I read this book physically, I probably would have not finished it or I would have skipped to the end to see if the couple got together or not. That's all I would have done. I know it's an unpopular opinion, but that's the way I feel. I was just so bored. <laughs> and now we're going to be getting into books that I actually really did enjoy. And number 10 on my list of books that I read in March was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kummer. I actually read this book in a weekend reading vlog. That was my last video. I will link it down below if you're curious to watch my thoughts while reading it. I will not go in depth on what I thought about this book in this wrap up because I plan to do a solo review on this book. Um, the first part will be spoiler free so don't worry about the being spoiled at all for clicking on that video. I plan to film that in the near future and post it hopefully soon. I forgot to tell you on my vlog, but I did have this book already. But the main reason why I picked it up when I did was because Kayla from Literature Reads started a book club called The Cozy Club. Cozy Book Club? I think it's called The Cozy Club. <laughs> but she started it and this was the first book for her book club. And I will link Kayla's channel down below. But she read this book too. I think she just came out with her video a couple days ago about her reading it and her thoughts on it. So go check that out if you want to hear more in-depth thoughts right now. So this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling and we have our main character Harper who lives in modern day and she ends up getting sucked into this fantasy land where there is a curse involved and her trying to help the prince break this curse. And I also didn't know going into this book that it was going to be a series. It's going to be a series. It left off quite the little cliffhanger there. I really enjoyed this story. The romance, I didn't know what to think about at the beginning because to be honest with you, I was so confused with who is going to be with who. I thought Harper and Ren were gonna be together. I thought Harper and Grey were gonna be together. At one point, I literally thought Ren and Grey were meant to be together. I'm not kidding you, which I would have been totally down for, but I didn't know what was going on with the relationships. Like maybe like halfway through the book, I finally got sucked in because of the romance aspect. I will go more in depth of what I thought again in the review that I plan to film, but the beginning of it was just so boring to me. I don't think I love it as much as other people do. I don't think it's a five star read for me just because the beginning was so slow. But overall, yes, I gave this a four out of five stars. The 11th book on this list is Transcendence by Shay Savage. This is a romance book an adult romance book and I really enjoyed it. I didn't know that I would enjoy it as much as I did. This is about a woman who gets sucked back into time where there is a caveman. She meets a caveman and they end up falling in love but he doesn't understand language at all. In the um, forward message at the beginning of the book, Shay Savage writes how this character, this man will never ever understand her because he doesn't have a part of the brain that we do where we can intellectually understand languages and know how to talk to each other. He does not possess that part of the brain. So he will never understand her at all. They will never form a conversation ever in their lives. I thought that was an important message to know beforehand because for a while there, you probably think that, oh, he's just gonna learn how to talk to her. That's not, that's not gonna happen at all throughout the book. Just letting you know because it's in the forward message. But this book is solely narrated in first person by the caveman. So you don't know what the woman is thinking like 
at all. The only gripe I had about it, I didn't give it a full five stars, I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars, just because the ending could have been way better. <laughs> I really enjoyed the ending, but it would have been so much better if she would have added to it. I can't explain add to what part because that's a spoiler but like the ending could have been better in the sense it could have been longer and I would have loved for it to be longer. Other than that, I really love the relationship. I love this naive, innocent girl falling for a man who knows absolutely nothing about women because he doesn't live with women because he lives by himself in a time way back when. And you like see in his brain how she tries so hard to talk to him and he just doesn't understand. I totally recommend this book if you are interested. I really loved it. The 12th book on this list is the second book in the series that's called Loves. It's technically book 1.5. It is transcendence in the point of view of the woman. This, by the way, is not the 12th spot on this list. I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It actually should be way lower on my list, but I had to talk about transcendence first before you could know about loves but I did not enjoy this book as much as the first one at all it's mainly because you only get little snippets in her point of view I thought it was the entire book going to be in her point of view it's not it's only little snippets the ending scene that you have in loves it's not even the end of transcendence so that really bugged me a lot I would have loved to know her point of view through so many different scenes that bugged me so much that we only had like little 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 snippets about her point of view this book is only a hundred something pages when transcendence was 300 something pages I was really disappointed I may even like lower my rating because I'm just so upset that I didn't get what I wanted in this you only have like little snippets which I didn't really care about I wanted other important scenes which was not present in this book but yeah I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars okay now we're going in to my five star reads for the month coming in at number 13 out of 16 is the prince and the dressmaker by Jen Wang I don't have my physical copy anymore because I had to return it to the library but I did read this book in the vlog that I talked about with the curse of dark and lonely so be sure to check that out if you want to know my live reaction thoughts while reading that book this is a graphic novel all about a prince who loves to dress up in dresses in his spare time secretly and he hires this dressmaker to to design and make these elaborate dresses for him that he loves dressing up in and he makes an alter ego for himself and he goes out in public and no one knows it's actually the prince and it's so cute and wonderful oh, I totally recommend it if you're into like a sweet little graphic novel if you're not into graphic novels and are interested in maybe like learning more about it or anything like that or like starting out with one to see how you feel about a graphic novel I would totally recommend this one as a starter book so good I loved it so much number 14 on this list is Little Women by Louisa May Alcott so actually I haven't finished this whole entire book I've only finished two here this part right here is how much I've read because I didn't know that technically when this was first published they were two books. This book was technically two books. It was Little Women and then I think Future Brides or something Brides was the second book. When the movie and the play that I've watched have both of those combined, I thought that's what this whole book was. So when I got the audiobook through my library, I expected it to be this whole book, but it only ended after part one. So I'm on the wait list for the next book in the series when it's actually just the rest of this book. So that was quite disheartening because I was in such a great mood to finish Little Women. Like I love this book so much. I was so upset that I had to wait like over three or two weeks to finish this book <laughs> because I love the narrator a lot. I really enjoy the narration and it would just like really confuse me if I were to physically read the rest of it. But technically I finished Little Women. But if you did not know about Little Women, this is a classic. This was written and set in the Civil War era America. And normally I don't like old American books. I don't like historical fiction set in America. I don't like old America at all because we were horrible people and our history is so flippin' boring. But this book and this story about these four sisters living in this time period, I love so much. I feel like I'm biased though, just because I grew up with this movie starring Winona Ryder. This movie, I grew up watching it and I love it still to this day. I've seen the play performed, like I have done everything with this book besides actually read it. I just think I'm 
biased because I love these women and I love this story so much that like I love anything about them. Number 15 on this list is A Quiet Kind of Thunder by Sarah Barnard. I was actually recommended this book by Vendi from Caught Between Pages, one of my friends here on booktube. I will link her channel down below. So this is about a main character, Steffi, who is selectively mute and because of her being selectively mute she comes with this crippling anxiety as well. So I really connected with her through that aspect because I deal with crippling anxiety so I really loved hearing about and reading about that representation and knowing that someone else in this world feels the same way that I do and has got these similar experiences. This is set in Britain so a bunch of the mannerisms, language, terms are different and I didn't know that it was set in another country when I first started it so I was very confused as to the grade system grade terms i didn't know what was going on for a little while and then i realized oh this is set in britain <laughs> so the first new day of term this boy named reese comes to school and he just so happens to be deaf the principal decides to have steffi welcome him to school because she is selectively mute and knows a little bit about sign language they are forced together but they actually really enjoy each other's company and they really enjoy learning about each other and talking to each other and Steffi finally finding a voice but not through her voice she feels like she can talk in mediums of her voice or even her hands so I really enjoyed that of her discovering that she can be and do more than she thought she could I loved it a lot total five out of five star read from me totally recommend this one. Last book on this list, my favorite book that I read in March was a reread, Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I read this for the Daughter of Smoke and Bone read along, but I read this book also in that vlog that I talked about with two of the previous books. So go check that out if you want to know my live thoughts about this book. I already have read this. I read this back in 2017, my freshman year of college. And I physically read it and fell in love with it. It was a five out of five star read for me then. If I could give this like six stars, 10 stars, I would now. I love it even more. And I think the audiobook added so much because I listened to the audiobook this time around. Listen to it in one day, like from one o'clock in the afternoon to one o'clock in the morning, I was listening to this book. This is an urban fantasy book. So all around the world, black handprints start appearing on doors. And these doors just happen to be the doorways to the chimera, which are creatures that are half human, half animal, or two parts of a different animal, 10 parts of a different animal. They're just creatures mixed with other creatures. It's very interesting to read about. But basically our main character, Karoo, she lives with these chimera. These chimera are her family but she's the only one who is a human. She was raised by these chimera, so they're basically the only people that she has a connection with besides her best friend who goes to art school with her. The tagline for this book is basically the devil falling in love with an angel. So we have this angel named Akiva coming in and angels are the enemies to chimera. So it's them butting heads basically and learning about each other's cultures a little bit. Um, I feel like we're gonna get to know a little bit more about both of them in the next couple books but it's just a romance book that spans across time like this is a young adult urban fantasy book but like ultimately it is like an amazing romance between two people and it spans across space and time and it is incredible to be honest with you i think this might be my new favorite series if i love the next books as much as these this is gonna top a quarter thorns and roses the throne of glass it's gonna top lunar chronicles it's gonna top everything for me because this book is just so flipping good i feel like more people need to read this book because i love it so much and of course five out of five stars that book forgot to say that anyways there y'all have it that was all 16 books that I read in March. Sorry if this video was really long. I'm really sorry that my wrap-ups are getting really long. Would y'all be interested in seeing like midway wrap-ups or like I see people doing recent read videos, but then I also feel like I read so many books that like every video that I post is just gonna be me recent reads. Like, I don't know. Tell me what y'all think down in the comment section down below. If y'all enjoy this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button. I would really, really, really appreciate it. And if you wanna see more content, from me be sure to click that subscribe button down below and if you want to know more about me or if you want to learn about me from different platforms i have my book twitter and my book instagram linked down below as well as my goodreads but anyways thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all soon in the new video bye